I'm going to walk you through every step of the process. That way it's super easy. I'm going to let you know. So final decision, we're going to do a second one on the same side. Yeah. Beautiful. And do you think you might eventually want to do like two hoops? I do want to do two hoops. Yeah. Nice. I feel like that's usually the goal when we're doing two on one side. That way they can fit like yeah. nice and parallel and be really cute. You know what's nice? Of uh, piercing me, like working with like something pierce, it's because I can't change my jewelry like the day after, or else I get in trouble. So I'm like, this is good. This is good. We're gonna we're gonna keep you responsible. Yes. We're gonna keep you really well. No Claire's hoops for me. No. No. But a sick nose shame. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna start by cleaning your nose and then making some marks. Okay. Yes. Does that feel good? Yeah. Alright, so you're just gonna feel me cleaning a little alcohol cool thingy. No, I love that smell. <laughs> oh, you're one of those. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me. It smells like dentist. Yeah. It just it smells very clean. Alright. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and start by making some marks. You're gonna feel me just kind of like pressing on your nose. I might move your current ring around a little bit just to kind of see how everything lays. And then once I have some marks down that I like, we'll talk about them in the mirror, okay? Okay, I'm just drawing. Please. Please. I've got a little marker. You should feel me touching your nose and just playing a little bit on Basically making sure, well, the big decision is like, do we go in front of or behind the interesting one? So yeah. that's what I am determining. Alright, so how about that can make a key thing of error and then talk about placement wise. So when the goal is to do two hoops, I typically want to be able to keep them about the same size. So I went in front of your existing one because as your nostril kind of curves back, it gets wider. So if we go behind it, the hoop is going to have to be a bigger diameter. So rather than being that nice like parallel to exactly the same size hoops, the back one's going to end up being a little bit larger. Now if you like that look, we can go behind, but I think in front is going to be really cute because then if we do hoops, we'll have two exactly the same size hoops. And then we have the cute hoop stud combo while it's healing. How do you feel about that placement there? Do we want to see it behind just to yeah. see how it looks back there? Yeah, absolutely. I'll back it up. Sorry, I'm like, oh. <laughs> just, oh. It's no big deal. We're going to be cleaning many times. I personally like that better, cool. but we can definitely go behind. I just think that hoop for behind we're probably going to have to go like one size larger. I think it'll still look very proportionate, but I just like to be honest with folks about no, that because yeah. some people like really want them to be the same size. I... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and get on some fresh clean gloves. We're going to do a little bit more cleaning for your nose, and then we'll go from there. So I'm just going to be telling you every single step of the way to go off. There's no surprises. You got this. I'm shitting my pants right now. No big deal. I can't believe people do this for, like, fun. Like, you do this for fun. Like, you're like, oh, what is it piercing? And then you pierce your whole forehead. Yeah. It's easy. through every single step of the process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here is your little in here that shows that everything is nice and clean. And we didn't have to take your jewelry back and tease all over it. Thank God. I mean, maybe we did. I was worried about it. But... All right, so I'm going to just you laying down. That way your whole body can be supported and you can relax. You don't have to worry about holding yourself perfectly straight. Just you laying down head that way. So how the process is going to go, I'm going to move your head in the right position. And I'm just going to do some pressing and some checking with my tools. Feeling ready for me to come over and kind of get started? Yeah, just sort of 
shebang this up. That's the way to do it. Um, so like I said, I'll get you in the position, I'll press and check with my tools. When I'm ready, I'll ask you for a nice big deep breath, and on the exhale, we pierce nice and easy, okay? I will tell you, I will not surprise you. I'm gonna walk you through every single step. I don't remember, is it worse or less than my cartilage? Um, it's still cartilage, so similar but different on the nose. Do like, you know when you have a pimple like in the corner of your nose? Yeah. Oh, and you go to pop it and it sucks. Yeah. Okay, that's what I think this feels like. Sure. It's like a, a spicy nose pimple in the same spot. Which is, okay, not my favorite sensation, but also not the end of the world. I think we're very much like spicy pimple level up. Sure. Walking through it, no surprises. You're just gonna feel me pressing and feeling around on the inside of your nose. So yeah, this is all this is. It's just me pressing around. Okay. Now, if you do not want to see anything, now's a great time to close your eyes. Oh, if you don't okay. care, you can leave them I open. Kiss my pants. <laughs> you got this. I'm gonna tell you when it's time for that deep breath. Okay, I'm not going okay. to surprise you. Okay. You're just gonna feel me starting to get things into alignment, and then okay. I'm gonna tell you when it's time for that breath. That's totally fine. All right, nice big deep breath. And exhale, nice and steady to great get things done. Just pop it in your jewelry. You did awesome. You're just gonna feel me guide in that pose, Ugh. and then I'm gonna walk on that little pot piece. Yeah, that's great. Oh, you're gonna feel a little bit of friction while I guide in the jewelry, and then you may hear a little crunchy sound, and that's just the sound of the closure on that threadless jewelry. The sound of you hopefully not losing this or changing it too early. Great. Yeah, there's no way I'd be able to do this myself, so. That little block sound. There we go, everything's done. Okay. You did it. That was so quick. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. It's not that bad, right? No. It's just, it's scary. It's a very humbling experience. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Oh. You can do this two more times. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> if it was, if it's you doing it, yeah. <laughs> I was definitely less, <laughs> less nervous. Than the ones for other piercings. Can you believe that? <laughs> I can. You know what's crazy? I only nose twice. And I, I think it's just the fact that it's like my face. Like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? There's also no being able to see it. That's scarier. Don't do It's cute. It is really cute. Super cute. So I hear from folks all the time that they want to get a piercing done, but they're nervous, they're scared. Can they still get pierced? What is the process going to be like? What should they expect? So I wanted to put this video here on my channel to kind of show you what it is like if you are a client getting a piercing done and you're super, super nervous <laughs> um, and you like want to know what to expect from the process. This is me doing a nostril piercing for my coworker, Bella. She's a tattoo artist here at Laughing Buddha Seattle. Actually, her stuff is super amazing and cute. If you're interested in fun, queer, femme, American traditional tattoos, she's your girl. Um, but I actually filmed this video to make a Patreon post about Bedside Manor and trauma-informed care and how we work with clients who possibly have trauma, um, clients who are neurodivergent and maybe overstimulated by the piercing process, and clients who are very nervous. Uh, and I decided I also wanted to post it here so that other folks who are nervous or scared or have trauma can see what they can expect from piercing experiences with piercers who have trauma-informed care training or a certain bedside manner and certain piercing styles. So you'll notice consent was a really big part of this process. I got consent before each touch. Um, I got consent before I even entered Bell's physical space. I kept some physical distance over on one side of the piercing room and didn't approach until she knew what we were doing and she gave me the verbal okay. Before I went to pierce, I waited to approach until I got that verbal okay. Every single step was walked through and every touch was narrated. That way she knew exactly what was going on, exactly what was happening, exactly what was happening to her body. She got to feel in control and involved in the process and know what was going on. And you can see even for someone as super nervous as Bella, <laughs> um, she did it, she did great. She finished the piercing and she was like, oh my God, that like really wasn't that bad. I like did it, we've survived, we're here. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit more behind the scenes of what goes on in my piercing room for folks who are curious about that uh, or want to get pierced and are nervous or want to get pierced and have trauma and are wondering what trauma-informed care services look like. And if you are a professional piercer or an apprentice or even if you work front of house or back of house and you want to learn more about trauma-informed care practices,
practices that you can put into place in your studio. You can see me do an incredibly in-depth breakdown. I think it's like 40 minutes long um, over on my Patreon of specific trauma-informed skills that I'm utilizing during this service and how we apply them effectively to keep our clients feeling safe and to build trust with our clients. All right. Thanks for checking this one out and hanging out. And I can't wait to see y'all soon. Bye.